Hi everyone, welcome to Baba Urban Farming Workshop. I'm Jess from Baba. Today our topic is how to build up a habitat or environment for beneficial insect for your garden. Do you know how to differentiate insect is a foe or friends to your garden? Would you like to have more friends or helper in your garden? If yes, then remember to stay with me and Hans tonight. And for new friends online, who is the first time who join our FB Live, could you please write down one at the comment? And if you this is the second time or more, this is the third, fourth, and more, could you write down eight at the comment? So I could we could know that is there any new friends or all is our old friends online? Okay, one for new friends, eight for friends that join our Facebook live for more than two times. Okay, so we're waiting you to key in and before start, I will have a quick introduction about Baba and Hans. Baba is a gardening accessory manufacturer from Malaysia. We continuously deliver quality, creative and eco-friendly gardening products to farmers and gardeners. We focus on we focus on de developing eco-friendly products and promote organic farming. Planting in organic way is important to conserve our environment. We always share organic farming method with farmers and provide training to encourage farmers reduce the usage of toxic chemicals. By this, it is good to farmers and also reduce, reduce agrochemical pollution. For home gardener, by using natural way to protect our gardens is important too because garden is one of the locations where we can relax our mind and enjoy family times. So through our sharing, we hope to make urban farming and gardening easier for everyone. So I could see that from the comment, there's a lot of new members for tonight. Hi and welcome all new members and hello again to all our old friends, okay? <laughs> So for friends who just joined online tonight, Hans will share about how to build our habitat and environment for beneficial insects for your gardens. Like ladybug, spider, spider, dragonflies. These are a very good helpers for garden and farmer. So do you want to know more? How, to, how could we attract more of these helper to our gardens? So if yes, then remember to follow us tonight and share our FB live now. Remember to click the share buttons. So after hand sharing, we will have a Q&A section. You may write down your question in comment anytime and I will read out to Hans during the Q&A section. So tonight, our speaker Hans, he graduated from Iowa State University of US with Bachelor Honor Degree of Agriculture and Biosystem Engineering. He has more than two years management experience in a 2,000 acres farm in US. He also been trained as organic farmer in choosing organic farm in Taiwan. He been visiting, visiting to Malaysia farm and conduct research on organic farming in the past seven years. So he continuously provide assistance and consultation to local farmers who would like to convert to organic farming. So he is very familiar with organic and non-pesticide farming practice. So. Let's welcome Hans Leong. Remember to click the share button so every let our friends could know the tips that share from Hans. Welcome, Hans Leong. Thank you, Jess. Hello, good evening, uh, old friends and new friends. Uh, welcome to uh, Baba Urban Farming Workshop. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight uh, to listen about the topics today. So as what uh, Jess said just now, today we would like to share about how to build up uh, habitat and environment for beneficial insects for your gardening. So uh, why would we like to share this uh, topic? Uh, as for your, informa uh, for your information, uh, like uh, for the countries who have more advanced uh, agro uh, agricultural technology, they, they put more importance on uh, biological control. Uh, which means that they make use of the beneficial insects or beneficial environment to uh, to control their pests. Okay, this is more. Uh, this is uh, the biological control or the beneficial insects is really crucial components in pest management. 
So we also came across uh, some farmers, uh, some teachers, because we also organized uh, teacher camps before the COVID-19. So they would really like to know more about how to uh, build up more beneficial insights in their uh, school environment, in their home gardening, in their farm environment, so that they can uh, they can have more helpers, okay, in their gardens, in their farm, and also can spread this message to their consumer and their students, okay? So, uh, on originally, this topic actually will take up like two days and then to, uh, to talk about, okay? But I will try my best to uh, to summarize into one hour topic and then so that uh, everyone can go back and try yourself. But today, the, the content is pretty uh, intensive, okay? So, you just uh, put, re uh, relax, okay? You just relax yourself, okay? Uh, just like listen to our stories or listen to our sharing to about the topics today. The content and the topics today are also suitable for large-scale farming, okay? So for you uh, who would like to apply these in your farm, it's okay too, all right? So what kind of beneficial insects have you ever seen, okay, for your whole life, okay? It could be dragonfly, it could be ladybugs, okay? It could be many, many more like bees, like the soldier bugs, like the uh, spirit fright, green lace wing. As we know, the earthworm, yeah, this is very good. The praying mantis and so on. And they are also the beneficial fungi and bacteria inside too. We could have all these beneficial creatures it should be win-win situation for us and for those uh, living things, okay? We provide the safe habitat for them and in turn, they will help us to work. They will help us to reduce the pests in our garden or our farm, okay? So hopefully, uh, through, the, uh, through the urban farming workshop today, we can learn all together. We can understand the various ways to create the natural habitat and environment for beneficial ecosystem. Okay, we could we will know the plants or the material that will attract the nature enemies, like uh, especially the beneficial insects, the plants and material that will attract the pests, so that the pests won't go to eat your food or your plants. Okay, the plants and or material that will repel the pest. So we come to the first topic, okay, subtopic, the plants or, or material that will attract the nature enemies. So firstly, we can grow the attracted plants, okay? Those can attract the nature enemies. The first plant we would like to introduce is the Mexican butterfly weed, okay? So this Mexican butterfly butterfly weed, as you can see on the plant over here, you see a lot of uh, something like lights on the plant here. So this plant is attracting the yellow aphids. And no worries, uh, as we know, the aphids can, uh, can be the pest for our plants, for our fruit crops. But these yellow aphids, this kind, will only uh, attack this uh, Mexican butterfly weed only. Okay, so this Mexican butterfly, we actually you can pre uh, get it pretty easily. Uh, for those uh, who live in Malaysia or Singapore, you should pretty uh, get it pretty easily. But for overseas, you probably need to take some time and then to get this plant. Okay, so these yellow aphids will become the food source. Okay, to attract the ladybugs. Okay, as you can see here, these ladybugs will come to eat these uh, yellow aphids. And there are a lot of types of ladybug, the good ladybug that will eat aphids, okay? Many, many more types. Okay, one of the types uh, commonly seen is uh, what we call the seven dots ladybug. So you can see there are seven black dots on their shell, okay? This kind of ladybug uh, prey the aphids, okay? And the next one, you can see this is also a ladybug. This is a skill eater, okay? Which eat, which prey the mealybugs, okay? So you see the shell is like black in color. And then this one is a relatively smaller than the normal seven dogs ladybug, okay? 
So when you see this, don't kill them because this is really good. Uh, and then can pray the melee bugs around. And then also, we, we can also see something like this. This kind of ladybug is a fungi eater, okay? They eat the powdery of mildew fungi and also other kind of fungi as well. So it can help to reduce the disease on your plants too, okay? So whenever you see this kind of, uh, 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 this kind of larvae on your plant, please don't kill them, okay? Don't take them away, okay? Please recognize this, okay? And put this in your mind. These are the larvae, uh, the children, the kids of the ladybug, okay? And the Mexican butterfly will not only attract the yellow FE as we mentioned just now, but they, the, the, the plants also attract this kind of uh, caterpillar, okay? They, they attract the, uh, the African monarch, or they also call it the plain tiger caterpillar, okay? So the caterpillar, they just fly to the plant and they lay eggs over there. So the egg hatch and become this caterpillar, okay? This caterpillar is uh, relatively, uh, uh, sorry, this caterpillar just uh, relatively love to eat these plants, okay? So it won't go to harm or other plants. So after a while, this caterpillar, okay, will grow, in, uh, will grow into uh, this butterfly, okay, the African monarch butterfly. This is really beautiful, okay. So why is the function of attracting this uh, caterpillar? Because this will become a food source for these parasitoid wasps, okay. So it looked like a kind of bees, it looked like a kind of wasps, but these uh, parasitoid wasps, okay, will approach this caterpillar and start to lay eggs, okay? You can see they poke their things inside the body of the caterpillar. They start to lay eggs into the pest, okay? The larvae uh, of butterfly or moth, okay? They could lay the eggs inside the body. They could lay the eggs inside the their eggs, okay? The caterpillar eggs, okay? And also the cocoon as well, okay? So when these, the eggs of the parasitoid wasps hatch, okay? It will turn into the larvae that start to eat the body of this kind of, uh, of this kind of caterpillar, okay? So it will help to reduce the pest as well. So the parasitoid wasps will also have to uh, will also lay the eggs into other kind of pests, okay, like the aphids, okay, the beetles, the trees, okay, the leaf hopper, mealybugs, and also the white fly larvae. So you can just imagine like when we have a Mexican butterfly weed, okay, we start to attract the 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 parasitoid wasps, okay, and they will settle down over there. Okay, and then they will also fly around in your garden to look for other pests as well. And in turn, it will help to reduce the pest population in your garden or your farm. We also can, uh, we also recommend you to grow the butterfly pea around your house. Okay, so it's really common the butterfly pea, uh, you we use the flower to be to uh, as a coloring or as a uh, as a flower tea, or uh, we put it as a, a fragrance for your food. Okay, it's really nice. Okay, and these the butterfly pea. As we grow for a certain time, you when you flip the back of to the back of the leaves, you will see there are something like uh, the small red dots behind. Okay, so this butterfly pea will attract some. Okay, very very few, but some. Uh, spider mites, okay? So these will become a food source of a kind of beneficial insects. As we know, this spider mite is very, really, very really small, okay? Smaller than a shilling, a coin, okay? And that's why uh, when you grow these, don't grow beside your food crop, okay? Just grow around your surrounding. And these, the food source of this spider mite will actually attract the predatory mites, okay? As you can see, this is a kind of mite that eat another mite, okay? So the 
the up one, okay, the above one is the predatory mites, okay? This is a kind of beneficial insects, okay? So as you can see from the picture, it starts to eat the spider mites, okay? So when you look under the microscope, how can we differentiate whether it's a spider mite or the predatory mites? So when you look under the microscope or even with the magnifying glass, okay, 20 times uh, magnifying, magnifying power, okay? So if you look, there is something like a mite that walk really fast and just like look around, okay? Like they are sourcing for, uh, uh, they are sourcing for food, okay? They are sourcing for their praise, okay? They walk very fast, okay? This is probably a predatory mite, okay? They usually uh, look in uh, white in color or transparent in color, okay? So when you attract these predatory mites, it will also eat other pests like the aphids, like the trees, okay? And also a small butterfly, okay? So as we say that when we do something and to eat, uh, to help to settle down all these beneficial insects, they will also in turn eat other pests in your garden. And also we can grow the billy goat weeds. These billy goat weeds will actually help to stabilize the population of predatory mites better than the, uh, than the butterfly bee we mentioned just now, okay? All right. The second action we can do is we can grow the plants with a lot of flowers, okay? So it's not really hard to find the plants with a lot of flowers, okay? These, all these plants, as what we can imagine that can flower a lot, these plants can produce a lot of honey, okay? As you can see, like from the flower the picture of the flower here you can see there are a lot of like powdery substance behind uh, beside this okay so these are the pollen okay these are what the bees like to collect okay these are the honey for the bees and for these this pollen actually are the food for the beneficial insects okay so can you imagine like the uh like the the uh what the the butterfly, what they eat, okay, after they after they grow into adults, uh, what the lacewing they eat, uh, a lot of beneficial creature they eat in uh, during their adult stage. Yeah, that's the pollen. Okay, so that's why in the overseas market they collect all these pollen, okay, and they repackage it to become the food or meal for the beneficial insects. So when they get it and then they spread around their garden and these will become the food source for the beneficial insects okay so if we so if we see these okay we can collect the pollen ourselves or just that we we can just grow uh, grow the plants with which produce a lot of flowers okay so as you can see here don't just grow only one flowering plant okay but it grow uh, grow in bulk okay because these will ensure to provide enough food and uh, like pollen to the beneficial insects, okay? And these also will create shady habitats for the beneficial insects, okay? So when they have food, when they have habitat, they will settle down over there, okay? All right, the third thing we can do is we can create the ecosystem ponds, okay? So we can create like this, the eco ecosystem pond in the garden, okay? We can create the small ecosystem pond at home. So what are the difference between the normal pond and also the ecosystem pond, okay? So as you can, as you can look from the picture over here, so it just, it's not just a pond or a hole containing the water, okay? You can see there are layer of rocks over here, okay, to create different gradients, okay, for different kind of beneficial creatures to stay over there. So you can see it, uh, it grow different plants over here, okay, and that it can create shades, okay, uh, for uh, different uh, beneficial uh, the beneficial creatures. For example, okay, let's say 
on the shallow uh, on the shallow level over here the birds like to stay over there because they can just stop over there and drink the water and at the same time you can also eat the pest surrounding okay but the frogs okay they would rather stay in somewhere shady okay over here so even for the small ecosystem pond at home okay we can also do some different gradients okay different gradient different uh, different uh, kind of environment uh, for the beneficial creatures okay and for these the clean water will actually attract this kind of insect, okay? You see, they are always like gliding on the surface of the, of the water. So this is what they call the water strider, okay? This water strider is actually a kind of very good food source for frogs, okay? So we know the frogs is really, really good, okay? It eat a lot of pests, okay? Like the, uh, like the grasshopper, uh, like many, many kind of pests in your home, okay? And it also can attract like the dragonfly, okay? We can, right now, uh, the, the environment, we probably uh, could rarely see the dragonfly around right now anymore. Later, we will explain the reason. So compared to other beneficial insects, this dragonfly is actually a very, very big eater, okay? Even compared to the other beneficial insects. Why? This dragonfly, is able to eat 2,000 aphids per day and also 1,000 small butterfly per day, okay? And can you imagine like 40 housefly per hour and also 840 mosquito per hour? So whenever it exists at your home, okay, it will help to you reduce the pest vastly, okay? So actually this is the larvae of dragonfly. So you, if you see something like cricket, okay, but this kind of cricket live inside the water, okay? So this is most likely the larvae of dragonfly, okay? This larvae of dragonfly will eat the wigglers, okay? The, the children of mosquitoes, about like 300 per month, okay? So can you imagine like it takes how long uh, to for the larvae to grow into the adult, okay. So, uh, when we whenever we ask this uh question to our friends, they say of oh, one month, two months, uh, six months, okay. But it actually takes more than two years to grow into adults. Why? Because these uh, larvae, okay, will actually takes like twelve to forty times of a uh, shading skin period, okay, and uh, to grow into uh, dragonfly and then the dragonfly will just leave for a short time and then they just like uh, reproduce uh, they just complete their reproduction uh, stage only okay can you imagine like we did this while if we spray pesticide or we apply the chemical fertilizers to the uh, ground and then all these leach to the water system okay and these will actually kill them kill the larvae okay so if you really still able to see the dragonfly in your community, well done. I think congratulations. It means that the water system in your community is clean enough and then for the dragonfly, for the larvae of dragonfly to survive. And fourth, we can create the beneficial ecosystem in soil, okay? So we know the doctor, okay, the savior for the earth, okay, is the earthworm. This is really good, okay? I really love the earthworm. This earthworm, okay, do a lot of things, okay? So they break down, they loosen the soil, okay? And according to the recent, uh, recent research, they will also feed on the pests like the nematodes, okay? And because they help to loosen the soil, they help the water flow better, okay? And then their poop can fertilize the soil, they also can break down the heavy metals, the poisonous metals inside the soil, and a lot of things. This world of one is really, really good, okay? So there are ways to attract the earthworm, okay? And one of the ways is that we can mix 10 to 20% of mint cake into the compost, and we after we mix that, 
we mix this mixture into the soil before begin to grow. So before, so usually before we start to grow the plants, we always mix the compost inside the uh, the soil. So you can add more, ten to twenty percent more neem cake and then to this mixture. Okay, this neem cake actually is the residue of the neem oil. This uh, we can know we know the neem oil. The residue of the neem oil is actually a very very good. Uh, attractant okay for the earthworm because the earthworm really eat love to eat the neem cake okay and also the after they eat the neem cake the earthworm will grow into really, really big size okay and we also can uh do the earthworm bean by ourselves as you can look from the picture over here very simple uh from the left hand side and also like the three levels a compartment like on the right hand side picture okay so it's really easy to do, just like do something like this, okay? And then each of the components, uh, you can lift out pretty easily, okay? So the structure over is something like this, okay? You need to drill the holes for the first two lay, uh, top layer of the compartments because it creates the holes for the air, exchange of air over here. And then for the first compartment, usually it's the active area you uh, for you to put the uh the food residue okay to put the earthworm over there okay and then we also have the storage bin over here so this storage bin will become the uh the uh the pee okay you know the earthworm they will pee okay this will become the liquid of the earthworm uh from the earthworm okay and then we also take the casting from the second layer and then this will become the wormy compost okay this is really good for your uh, for your farm, okay? And then, but the bathing material, this is really important, okay? We can put some cover, we can put some cocoa peat over there, and then to avoid the overheating of the uh, food residue over there. And most importantly, we need to put the cover over there. Uh, quite, uh, quite a while, we do this, uh, we do this uh, earthworm beam, and we forgot to put the cover, and the bird, we just came over to eat away the earthworm so it's not very good so the first two layer you can just do something like this very easily you just need to drill the hole beside and or drill the hole above for the exchange of air okay so when you do this okay you need to avoid to put too much food waste okay so each time you only put like five cm thick okay to avoid the heat up process the composting process okay the earthworm will usually stay at the bottom okay then where they will only surface to the top when there is food residue on top, okay? So when you do this, okay, don't put any meaty material, don't put any oily material, no acid and citrus material over there, okay? So when doing this, we can produce more earthworms, so you can either make another wormy composting bean or you can put extra earthworm into your soil and try to restore the soil back into a very, very fertile and healthy stage. All right. So right now, we can do a short revision over here. Okay, the plants or bacteria that will attract the natural enemies include the Mexican butterfly weed. These will attract the ladybugs and parasitoid wasps. The butterfly peas or the billy goat weed, these will attract the predatory mites. The plants with a lot of flowers, you need to grow them in bark, in rows, and then to provide uh, uh, enormous food source for beneficial insects. We can also do the ecosystem ponds to attract frogs and dragonfly, and we also can mix the compost with neem cake, or we do ourselves the earthworm beam to attract and reproduce more of worms. And next, the subtopic we like to talk about is the plants or material that will attract the pests. This will attract the pests out from the plants, out from your food crops, so that the pests won't go to attack your plants. So something we can do is, like for example, the night insect trap. So we can do this by ourselves, okay? We can do a supporting structure like this, uh, the roof structure like this and from here we can install the uh, purple light or the white light okay and beneath here we can put the yellow bowl inside containing the water and the used motor oil so why we need to use uh, 
purple light or the white light because at night, these will attract the, the, the pest easier. And why we need to put the use of motor oil? Because, okay, when the pests, they, they are attracted to the light and they knock on the light and they fell down to the water and somehow they will still be able to escape from the water by swimming around. But if we put some used motor oil on top, it will create a sticky surface layer. Their wings will get stick on the motor oil and they will not be able to escape. So something we can do something like this. We can install the roof like the uh, the the sunlight energy rooftop. This is really good. Okay, this will actually help to attract like the pests, like the butterfly, the leaf manner adults. Okay, uh, something like this you can imagine. Very simple. Okay, in your uh, in your garden in your farm. Okay, attract the fly uh, the flying pests. So if we do something like this, we need to have some. We need to take note on several things. The nitrate will become will eventually become less effective if there is full moon, if there is a lot of lights surrounding. This will become the distraction. So you look from the eyes from the of the past over here. These are the compound eye. Okay, these eye are monocular, which means that they can detect light. Okay, they know which direction of the light, but they cannot measure the system, uh, they cannot know the distance of the light. Okay, so whenever there is full moon on the sky or they are like the lighting around your house, okay, they, they think that oh, there are lights surrounding. Okay, so they do, will just like fly towards the light. Okay, and they, this will distract them from going to the night trap. So when you want to use the night trap, Better close all the light, okay, uh, at the surrounding. The second trap we would like to talk about is the flute fry trap, okay. So, uh, I know some of the friends, okay, we always receive a lot of PM, okay, on the facing this kind of problem, okay. There are holes on the fruit skin over here, so when they, uh, when they cut into half, they will see the flesh is getting rotten. And also inside got worms, okay? This is really troublesome, okay? And this is really too late. So why? Because of these fruit flies. As you can see, these, the, the back structure over here, okay? They poke inside the fruit and the lay, they, lay, uh, they lay the eggs inside over here, okay? So what we can do, okay, these uh, we can search for online purchase platform they are available everywhere okay we search for fruit fly lure or the chemical name is called meteor eugenol so it should include the cap with fly incoming holes the, fr the fruit flies will just fly into this hole and go into this trap container okay inside here there is a absorbent cotton okay so we just drip uh, some drops of fruit fly lure over here okay so this kind of smell will attract the fruit flies uh in, inside and they won't be able to escape okay but this kind of fruit fly lure we're only able to attract the uh the meal okay the male fruit fly okay and which uh which uh, which fruit fly is going to attack the fruits? Actually, it usually is a female, okay? So they attract the male over here and help to re uh, reduce the reproduction rate of uh, getting the eggs laying out. We also can do this ourselves. We can just uh, get the uh, meter igino, uh, the fruit fly lure. What we can do is we can get the, the trap container like the mineral water bottle, okay? We just put the, poke the holes beside here so that the flies will go inside and rarely the flies will like fly out from here. They won't like helicopter flying out like that, okay? So whenever they get fly inside, they will get trapped over here. This is very easy, uh, easily to do. The most importantly, when we use this kind of trap, we need to place far from, a uh, little bit far away from the tree, okay? Don't just put inside the tree because if you put inside the tree, which means that you are actually signaling more fruit flies coming over here 
to eat your plants, which is nearly not good. We actually, what we want to do is we want to attract the fruit flies out from the tree. So that's why we need to place at the edge of the tree. And the third things we can do is we can grow some roselle trees, okay? We can grow the roselle trees surrounding, okay? You know the roselle? The flowers, we can, like, uh, these kind of flowers, okay? We can actually do some uh, drinks, like Rabina drinks, uh, like uh, the uh, flowered tea, uh, jam, uh, many, many things, okay? I love roselle, okay? So these roselle tree actually will attract a kind of pest, what they call the pumpkin beetle, okay? So you know the pumpkin beetle, they will actually go to eat a lot of leaves like this, okay? Okay, so these, uh, like, they were going to attack a lot of beets, like, you know, the cucumbers, like the pumpkins, like the wines, a lot, okay? They will, they will attract all these pests coming out. So when you grow the roselle tree, don't, no worries, okay? They will only attack go to eat the leaves only. But according to our experience, okay, the rosette the rosa tree still be able to grow healthily. Okay, they stay able to bear flowers. So no worries, go ahead and plant all these. And then these uh, flowers will actually become your extra uh, harvesting, uh, extra harvest for yourself. All right. So the third Stop, uh, subtopic we would like to talk about is the plants and material that will repel the pest. There are several types of pest, repel, uh, pest repellent plants. Uh, they could be herb type, they could be spice, they could be uh, the decoration plants. Okay, so the herbs could be like mint, the rosemary, the garden sage, thyme, uh, marigold. Okay. And then the spice, like for example, the basil, the coriander, the fennel, the celery, the citronella, the pandan, okay? And the decoration type of plants uh, could include the marigold, the cosmos, the calendula, uh, petunia, uh, wormwood, and so on, okay? So why these kind of plants will actually help to repel the pest? Because these plants contain natural occurring alkaloid, okay? So these, you know, when we drink coffee, inside coffee, there is caffeine, okay? So caffeine is one of the natural occurring alkaloid. Uh, the plant will actually synthesize this kind of alkaloid to protect themselves, okay? From uh, being eaten by the pests, uh, from being eaten by the big animals and so on, okay? So, uh, the plants we mentioned just now, they all containing their own alkaloids, okay? So when so whenever we want to grow all these pest repellent plants, okay, we try to mix uh, all these types, okay, and plant all together, okay? Because each of them will produce th a different kind of alkaloid, and then it will help to prevent a broader types of pests, okay? This is very good. And one of the extra tips we would like to share to you today is what we can do with these plants, okay, apart from repairing the pests. So what we can do is we can do the enzyme by ourselves. We can uh, do the pest repellent enzyme 1, 3, 10. This is the ratio put inside your mind 1, 3, 10, okay? So one referring to the one kilogram of sugar, but don't use the white sugar because white sugar have been already chemically processed and uh, don't have any mineral or vitamin anymore for the microbes. And then the three kilogram, uh, the three referring to the three kilogram ingredient. Just now we talk about the herbs, the spice, the decoration plants and so on. And also 10 referring to the 10 kilogram of uh, water, okay? Don't use the tap water unless the water has been exposed under the sunlight for more than two days because the tap water inside got the chlorine, okay? This chlorine will actually kill the microbes. And the container we use, usually we take a opaque contain container. So because if the container is transparent, it will be more exposed to the 
UV around, the ultraviolet ray around, which we can clear or slow down the microbes inside, okay? But if we only have the transparent container, we need to close them with gloves and then for the fermentation to proceed better, okay? And then we can add more uh, beneficial microbes like the EM1, the Bacillus subtilis, if available. So when we do like this, okay, we just mix them all together, okay, and we let them ferment for three months, okay? So you can see, wow, the white color uh, things, the layer on top, which means that this is a very, very good microbes on top, very, very active. This is really good, okay? So after three months fermentation, we just need to add like five millimeter of water to one liter of, uh, sorry, five mil of the enzyme to one liter of water and spray on plants, okay? That will be good enough, okay? So you do like this, there is no expiry date on this enzyme. Okay, it's just like wine. The longer you keep, the better the quality it is. We have farmers that keep for 10 years and then the 10 years, uh, they put the, uh, the citronella, okay, doing the fermentation. Eventually, it's concentrated enough and then to kill the pest in one go, hmm, 10 years. All right, the second thing we can do with all these pest repellent plants is that we can do the pest repellent essential oil by ourselves. So what we can do, we can search the online platform, the online purchase platform, the distillation kit for essential oil. You can search something like this in a group, okay? In the, pack, uh, in the package like this, okay? Very easily, okay? So what this do is that we just put the fine ingredients. We need to make them into fine uh, particles like this. The herb, the spice, the decoration plants, okay? We put some water over here. We turn on the heat source, and then when the water starts to boil, okay, and then it will help to produce, okay, if the water vapor will go through this ingredient, it will produce the smoke, okay, for essential oil, okay, and then this will actually cool down on the left hand side over here. Uh, these are the cool down essential oil, and this is the essential oil reserve, okay. Okay, you can see something like this, okay? This is the very, uh, like, uh, uh, a, cloudy, a cloudy liquid, like, on the left-hand side over here. This is the essential oil. So when you do over time, okay, it's normal that this water change the color, okay? So the more you do, okay, the water will become, like, darker in color. The thing is that after we get this essential oil, okay, this, since this is an oil, Usually, it cannot mix readily, uh, uh, sorry, uh, dissolve readily inside the water. So what we need to do, we need to emulsify this uh, essential oil. What we need to do is we need to premix the essential oil with 10 another 10% of alcohol. Then, after that, we just mix with water, like 300 to 500 times of dilution. For example, if we get like 10 ml of the essential oil, we need to add another one meal of alcohol, 90% alcohol, okay? 90% concentrated, okay? Then after we emulsify it, then we just add three to another three to five liter of water. So we do another short reaction over here. The plants or the material that will, that will attract the pests include the night insect trap, okay? To attract those flying natural pests. We also have the fruit fly lure to attract the fruit flies and also the roselle trees to attract the pumpkin beetle. We can also grow some plants or use some material that will repel the pests. We can mix and grow the herbs or spice or decoration plants. And these plants will, can be additionally processed into enzyme 1310 or pest repellent oil. Most importantly, okay, don't use any poisonous and dangerous chemical parasites in your home. We know that, uh, we know that, okay, these uh, parasites will actually endanger your health, but the thing is that if you really want to uh, preserve, uh, sorry, conserve these beneficial animals, so we want to protect them, don't use chemical parasites. Uh, what we can do is we can apply organic certified organic pesticides that is safe for beneficial insects, okay? So the more so the more organic pesticide you spray, actually it will help to reduce the pests in your home, okay, or your farm, 
But at the same time, because it won't harm the beneficial insects, the beneficial insects will actually start to grow in their population. Okay, and then that's the reason. At the end, you will spray organic pesticide less and less because more and more beneficial insects in your surrounding. Okay, so you can go to look for organic uh, certified pesticides uh, in the market. All right. Uh, in our Facebook, we we have uh, Baba Gardening Face uh, International Facebook. We share some uh, educative uh, information, okay, about uh, why we need to support uh, using organic way, okay, why we need to use organic method in our gardening, okay. So please support this, like and share uh, to your friends, okay, to protect your lives and then to protect your friends' life and so on. All right. Thanks. Here's the end of my sharing. Now I pass the time to our host, Jess. Thanks, Hans. So now we will move to a Q&A section. So before we move, move to Q&A section, friends who are still uh, stay online, welcome to click on share button and share out our Facebook live tonight to all your friends. So from here, we can see that uh, Carol and Anita was getting shocked when they see uh, Han sharing about the distill, distillation kit. kit. <laughs> yeah. So this is uh, one of the sharing uh, because uh, essential oil is really effective in, in uh, as a natural pest uh, repellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is only uh, one of the way that we could consider, I, but we, I know. this is not the, necessary the, for us to have the, I know, I know they are laughing at us on the distillation kit, okay? But yeah. the thing is that, but the thing is that the you know it takes a lot of the the ingredients and to produce that little amount okay so it will be expensive like uh for our to for us to process uh, ourselves and go through the transport and then go to your hands okay but it's better for you to produce ourselves because you can get these are uh, pretty cheap pretty easily okay <laughs> okay, so now we start to have our Q and A section. So, friends, if you have any question regarding uh, hand sharing, you are you are uh, you you could write down the question. You could write down the question here. Yep. Okay. So for for the first question is how far because uh, just now Hans you have introduced a lot of plants that you could help us to attract more beneficial insect to our gardens. But yep. at the same time, most of the plants they might be attract the pests also. So, mm -hmm. uh, how far away must we plant the plants to that attract predatory insect from our crops? Is there any recommended uh distance? Oh, oh, okay. Actually, uh, ac okay. Actually, just the surrounding will be good. The what we call the perimeter of your perimeter of your garden okay so uh when uh so there is no exact distance that you need to grow okay but just you need to make sure you grow around the surrounding the perimeter of your garden uh your farm environment that, that will be good enough okay yeah so no, no exact uh, distance. Could I, so could i could i just uh direct plants next to my crops next to my vegetable or next to my uh, next to my crops uh uh okay not really exactly next to the crops let's say okay let's it depends on how big is your space let's say uh we ha i have only like 10 square meet 10 square feet okay of the farm like uh, on of the garden area like that 10 square feet something like that so what i need to do is i can grow the far far front and the far end okay that that will be good enough okay so so when you grow the far front and the far end okay then it will then the next will be then the, in the at the center will be your crops and then that that is okay as well okay so just make sure you grow around the perimeter that will be good oh so it is not it is suited in the plantation uh, or in yes. the area but it's, yes. it's along the walkway uh, yes. uh, uh, along the uh, uh, the surrounding yes yes along the way around the surrounding that would be good yeah uh so it, it which mean that uh it will just uh, right, remain outside the territory mm. and reduce the chances yep. that they get into the planting uh, get into yep. our planting zone 
yeah because the purpose is we want to attract them outside the plants okay mm. so mm, so we just grow outside grow the perimeter okay okay so uh, uh the next question is uh from liu uh them shall fish beneficial as uh, them shall flies beneficial as dragonflies them shall flies i am not sure about this let me check on that okay i will come back to you All okay right. uh liu you may uh you may share out uh, you may share us the insect that the you picture. know and then pm us so by looking at the actual picture, maybe uh, we could know uh, Hans oh, could... Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. The damn shell flies is something like uh, very close to the green lace wing. Okay. So this one actually is a beneficial insect as well. Okay. Oh, okay. Wow. But this is really hard to see. In, okay. I'm not sure. Uh, if you really have seen this, please take the picture for us. Okay. Welcome uh, to share, share with us. us so that us we can and share, also with, share with our friends. friends. Yeah. This is really hard to see. In. Wow. Yes, thank you. Okay, then next uh, from Suyi, how to solve millipedes and snail problems? I have so many millipedes on my small paws. Okay, so actually the millipedes are relatively harmless to your plant, to be honest, because the millipedes will actually only uh, eat the decaying objects, okay? Eat the decaying things inside the uh, the soil and they produce the poops and then these poops will become the nutrient for your plants as well okay something like the oak firm but you know we know we know that this is a uh, really troublesome okay so what we can do is we need to expose the the soil to the sunlight the millipedes will actually love to uh, live in two kinds of environments one is a lot of Decaying objects like the uh, decaying roots, uh, decaying leaves, uh, decaying uh, branches inside the soil, and also the soil is then wet. Okay, so once we expose the soil to the sunlight, okay, there is less moisture inside the soil. The millipedes will just like go away. Well, we can do like this. For the snail, okay, this is uh, this is uh, this can harm your plant. What we can suggest you can find something like. Uh, 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 what we call the camellia seed meal, okay, or uh, you can find organic molluscicide, okay, this is the name, you can find that to spray around the plant, okay, so when the snail they pass by, it will track, it will harm their mucus, uh, mucus layer, okay, and then they will, they will die like that, okay, you can do so, okay. Okay, and then next question is from Angeline. He is saying that uh, earthworm or composting worm. So I think he is com she might be confusing regarding the uh, earthworm composting oh. just now. Oh, okay. The earthworm. Okay, I, I clarify this. Okay, just the, okay, the earthworm. Okay, but the thing is that the poop produced from the earthworm, they call it wormy compost. Okay, so we take, we take the, the poop and then to apply to the ground, as the compost okay but the earthworm okay we can either produce more compost or we can apply directly to the ground and then it can help to make your ground make your soil better okay you you can have this option all right mm. okay and then from Frankin is can we use the electric mosquito track in the garden to attract the pests Yes, definitely. But yes, definitely. But the thing, but the thing is that, um, but the thing is that, uh, 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 we find, we find, uh, because I know there are something like the wavelength of the mosquito trap. Okay, I'm not sure what is the wavelength. Okay, but if the wavelength is correct, the, the usually is the UV light. Okay, you can use that to attract the pest. But the thing is that. It, it will be less effective if there are light surrounding because the the pests will get uh, distracted by the light surrounding. So you need to close the surrounding lights and only use this kind of trap, okay? Please take note on that. Okay, and then next question is regarding the uh, for the enzyme. So for the enzyme, can we replace the molluscs as the alternative for the sugar? 
that will be good, okay? These molasses actually contains a, not only the sugar, but a lot of minerals, vitamins for the microbes, okay? So if you have molasses, go, to, go ahead to use that, no worries, okay? Okay, and during uh, during we making the enzyme, and is the color of the container is mm. uh is one of the must be a black color or do you have any uh, not, requirement? Oh, 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 not necessary. So she asked about is black water suitable? Yes, it's suitable, but black is not a must. Okay, what I mentioned is we just make sure it's not transparent. Okay, so. You, whenever you use something like the white, you know, the white tongue, uh, the, the, the something inside got the, the paint, you know, the paint, okay? The paint tongue, white in color, that, that could be, we can use that also as long as we clean that well enough, okay? So white color, blue color, red color, black color, okay, it's fine. As long as it's not transparent, okay? Whatever you, uh, is available to you, okay? Okay, then uh, next question from Francis. Any plants can help to wipe off the leaf finer? Mm -hmm. Not real, not really. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, it's under my limited knowledge still. Okay, so <laughs> if you have any, if you have any plants, welcome to share with our friends over here. Okay, uh, and then that, that will then be great enough. Do you yeah. have any tips to prevent the leaf miner if in case of a uh, leaf miner? Okay, the leaf miner actually the leaf miner is uh you know. Uh, the, the the process is something like this. The leaf miner adult is something like a, a like fruit flies just now, so they will fly around and then they will stop on the leaf surface and they poke inside the leaf and lay the egg inside. So the larvae hatch, uh, the eggs hatch, the eggs hatch and the larvae just like eat the leaves. Okay, walk around and eat the leaves. So what we can do is we can do some prevention before that. What we can uh we can. Uh, put some yellow sticky trap, okay, to uh, before uh, when we start to grow the 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 plant or the uh, the fruit crops, okay. So when the leaf miner adult they fly around, okay, they will just go uh, get attracted by the yellow sticky trap and poop, okay, and then it won't it won't lay the eggs on your leaf. This it is will reduce the, reduce the population reduce. of the leaf yes, miner. Yes, 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 yes. This by is the yellow of, sticky trap. Yes. Okay. And this this uh this method also uh effective for other flying uh flying pests as well. Okay, you can do that. This is a very good method. All right. Okay. And the second question is: If water put under sunlight for enzyme, wouldn't that promote the growth of algae? Any alternative like mineral That's mineral or distilled water? So if you put the ratio, as I mentioned just now, yeah. one, three, one, three, 10, as I mentioned just now, and also you put more uh, beneficial microbes like the EM1, okay, or other kind of beneficial microbes, it will actually uh, reduce the possibility of algae, okay? So, and then also uh, one of the things that the algae will grow is because it's transparent as well, okay? The, the light the light when it is short inside and then it start to have some photosynthesis going on inside the 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 the, the container so that's why uh uh opaque container is very important okay mm. okay uh, another thing that i would like to clarify is uh the water put under sunlight is it mm -hmm. uh just now hans you got recommend that if we if they are using the tap water oh yes the tap is water it? so Yes, ah, so we just maybe, exposed... Maybe Francis is getting uh, confused with... Confused. Okay, yeah. I see. So, so we just exposed for two another two days, okay, to let the chlorine off, okay? Just like what we do for the aquarium, for the fish, you know? The fish in the aquarium. So uh, once the chlorine is uh, going off, or then we just we just use that. Like mineral or distilled water, okay, because inside no chlorine, you can just go ahead and use that. No, that, that, that... that that could that could work as well okay okay so now come to the last question for tonight so is there any beneficial insect that it leaf hoppers 
Not yet. Okay. Not not really yet. Okay. But uh, so far we are still observe. But so far we are still uh, observing. Okay. Uh, probably the predatory mites will go. Uh, will go to eat that uh, leaf hopper. Okay. But not in uh really how to say not really in the direct favor matter. Okay. So for the green hopper, really we still need to rely uh on the organic pesticide to reduce the green hopper on the okra. Okay. 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 So that's all the uh, question. Uh, it's oh. all the question that I have to read out at night. So if yeah, there is a uh, still uh, some question online. But if your question not being read by me, you are welcome to PM us. And then if uh because some some I got uh see that some question is on specific plants or specific types of uh pests. So welcome to take uh follow our follow every time welcome to follow and like our Baba Gardening International. So every time when we go live on our online workshop, you will never miss out. And then next, if your question is didn't be read out by me on tonight, welcome to PM us. And then if you have question regarding the plants, the existing existing plants that you have now, you send us two picture. Why is a cross up picture which we can see clearly on the pest uh, or the plant section which have the uh, problems and then second picture is taking from far so uh, we could see that the whole the 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 whole condition and what is the condition of the plant so that we could make a better suggestion for you to uh, to cure to cure the plants 